In the last episode, we talked about the Ming army starting to pour into the south of Korea, as well as the further decline of Toyotomi Hideyoshi's health. Now the Ming are back on the move. I'm Stefan, and this is Japan at War. By mid-December, the Ming army started to march south from Seoul, much to the relief of the Korean citizens who felt that the Ming soldiers were unruly and had taken far too long to begin their next offensive. Yang Hao would have overall command. Under him was the left army commander Li Rumei, central army commander Gao Zhe, and right army commander Li Fengchun, each with approximately 12,000 soldiers. Yang Hao, according to the annals of King Sanjo, invited the Korean king to ride with them for the first couple of kilometers. At first, it was done at a moderate pace, but the second they left Seoul's south gate, Yang dug his heels into his horse and set the animal into a run, which forced King Sanjo to do the same. He, not being a skilled horseman, struggled to keep up. He did, though, and made it all the way to the Han River. It's difficult to say what this was all about. I do think it's safe to say that this was done on purpose, though. But I would like you to leave me your thoughts on this down below. The Ming commander-in-chief Ma Guoi left his camp and moved east till he met with Yang Hao's army on January 26 at Kyungju. He then combined his army with Yang's. If I'm not mistaken, this would actually be close to 40,000 men. They would then be joined by Korean commander-in-chief Kwon Yul's 10,000-man army. This incredibly large army then moved to the southeast towards Ulsan. There was a slight problem with the supply line that the Koreans were supposed to provide, as they started to disappear before the Allied army even reached Ulsan. As this will actually play into the battle ahead. January 26 saw the start of the combat. A Ming cavalry force of about 3,000 arrived ahead of the main army before the sun had risen. The plan was to destroy the garrison at Byongyong Song. However, the garrison foolishly didn't post any sentries and got completely destroyed. The Ming force then attacked a nearby camp. The commotion of the slaughter alerted a much larger Japanese force to race forward to try and save what was left of the garrison. The commander of the Ming force, Li Rumei, commanded his troops to fall back, where a much larger Ming force was waiting to ambush the Japanese. As the Japanese foot soldiers charged forward, they found themselves running into a Ming force laying themselves out in a crane formation. They charged still, though they were not able to overtake them. Instead, fierce fighting continued between the two armies until the sun had fully risen in the morning. The Ming commander-in-chief, Ma Guoi, then personally led a 200-strong Mongol cavalry force to charge the Japanese from the rear. Nearly three hours of fighting went on before the Japanese decided that they needed to retreat. They split into two groups, one to retreat and the other one to cover the retreat. The Japanese casualties was said to be around 500 at this time, while the Ming's, well, stay to the end of this series and we'll talk about that. The Ming army then burned down the Japanese camp. Commander Ma Guoi and Li Rumei then decide to rest and wait for the allied Ming and Korean army. The Japanese made the decision to send a dispatch to Kato Kiyomasa, who was shocked by the news, and raced from Soseng Po to Ulsan by boat up the Taewo River and into Dosan Fortress at midnight. He did this without the enemy noticing him slip into the fortress. The Dosan fortress he discovered was not in ideal shape. The construction had not been fully completed. One of the gates on the outer wall actually hadn't had its gate finished, which left a huge hole in the defense, something that could and would be exploited. January 30th, just a few hours after Kato Kiyomasa took charge of the situation on the Japanese side, the Ming started preparations for their next assault. The plan was to launch an attack in multiple locations at the same time, thus overwhelming the enemy, leading to victory. 
Li Fengchun's army would attack the river fortress at Taewa. Li Rumei would attack the fortress directly, and Gao Zhe's army would secure Jotun to repel any Japanese reinforcements that might arrive. Yang Hao and Ma Gui, being the highest ranked commanders, supervised Li Rumei and Li Fengchun's assaults personally. The Japanese caught on just after about an hour as their enemies started to move and braced for the attack. Kato Kiyomasa started to give out orders to his men. Asano Yoshinaga was commanded to leave his camp and move into Ulsan Fortress. Kato Yoseyaman was also commanded to move in. Two hours after that, say around 6 or 7 a.m., the actual assault began with a barrage of artillery and rockets, which set many of the buildings and even some of the ships in the dock on fire. Li Rumei's forces then assaulted the fortress complex. Asano Yoshinaga's camp soon fell. However, Asano's men were able to put up a fierce resistance that lasted anywhere between three to four hours. And as oppressive as this resistance was, the Ming were able to break through the northwest corner of the fortress. Kato Kiyomasa understood that Osan Fortress was a lost cause and ordered Asano Yoshinaga and his men to fall back to Dosan Fortress. While they retreated, the Ming flooded in, killing all the defenders that had lagged behind. The fort of Bengong and Siobong Dong Song was also captured at this time. While this happened, the Tewa River Fortress was also being attacked by Li Feng Chun and his men which honestly never stood a chance against the much more numerically superior Ming force. It of course fell. Li Feng Chun's men then started to make their way towards Ulsan Fortress complex. Funny enough, while all these battles were going on, Gao Zhe at Jontun sent a messenger to his superior Yang Hao for permission to join the battle. This annoyed Yang, who had the messenger's ear cut off. but. Seeing the benefits and perhaps even the need, he eventually sent one of his own messengers to Gaozhe to move his men almost three kilometers closer to Tosan. Around noon the same day, Dosan Fortress was the only thing left that was resisting the Ming Joseon allied army. Yang Hao and Ma Gui then moved forward and made a hill named Hak Song San their new siege camp so they could oversee the battle. Once that was done, all three armies, Gao Zhe, Li Rumei, and Li Feng Chun, attacked all at once. Cannons and rockets were fired at the walls, killing laborers and soldiers alike. The Ming then utilized grappling hooks to try to tear down the walls. A Japanese source describes the determination from both sides. A large hook grabbed the top of the wall. Fifty men, maybe even a hundred, pulled on the rope to bring the wall down. We shot at them from the side. When we did, only ten, maybe even just five, remained to pull the wall down. They are brave men. Other sources say that the Ming were so determined in their assault that they were practically crawling onto their own dead to scale the walls. Now, despite the losses, the Ming were successful in tearing down several walls and had scaled several others. From the east side of Dosan, the Ming captured the gate of Obigarua. They then attacked the Ninomaru, but this was defended by Kato Kiyomasa himself, and through his skillful use of his matchlock men and a corps of samurai, they were able to resist two Ming commanders and their attacking force. Ming commander Li Rumei even joined the fray and assaulted the east gate of the Hanmaru with at least 200 troops. However, the troops he took with him had inner problems with the Ming troops that were supposed to support them, some being from the north and some being from the south. Commander-in-chief Ma Gui would actually step in and force him to call off the assault. Almost all of the initial 200 men died without the much-needed support. Around two hours from the initial assault, 40 Japanese ships of various sizes reached Ulsan from Soseng Po with a mission to provide reinforcements and badly needed supplies. The Ming commander in charge of the assault, Yang Hao, sent a thousand cavalry men 
and 2,000 Zhejing infantry to the river to stop the Japanese from reinforcing the besieged men at Dosan. The Ming forces actually didn't have a way to truly intercept them, though, as the Ming didn't have any warships in the area. There wasn't any Korean ships either. Luckily for the Ming commander assaulting the fortress from the west side, Chen Yin saw the ships and ordered his artillery to fire on them and actually managed to sink three of the ships. The Japanese ships then moved out of range of the cannons and waited till the end of the day to see if there would be an opening. Sometime around 4 to 5, the same day, with both Ming and Korean losses reaching an unacceptable rate, the Ming decided to call back their forces. The Japanese saw the Ming signal to retreat, which prompted Asano Yoshinaga to open the west gate of the Hanru, and his men flooded out, killing every soldier that they could get their hands on. Kato Kiyomasa then ordered Asano to chase down the Ming out of the fortress. The Ming then brought up cannons to bring down the walls. But they had no effect due to the fact that the citadel was built on much higher ground than what the Ming could currently bring their cannons on. This barrage is said to have lasted for the rest of the day. Sometime around 7, the tides in the Tewa River began to rise. The Japanese flotilla off in the war took advantage of this rising tide and rushed in to drop off reinforcements, supplies, and take in some of the injured. Yang Hao would actually think that Kato Kiyomasa had left on this ship. Most likely thinking that he was cowardly and tried to chase them down, but didn't get anything for his efforts. When he returned, Yang Hao called all the commanders so that they could discuss what their next course of action would be. It was decided that they would simply just burn down the fortress, and the soldiers were ordered to collect firewood for the rest of the day in preparation of tomorrow. The Japanese were also busy. Kato Kiyomasa oversaw makeshift modifications and repairs that night personally, the biggest modification being more gun ports being put into the walls. Later that night, a raid into the Ming camps was to be held, but was called off when the Japanese scouts realized that the camps were actually just too well guarded. January 31st, just like before, the Ming launched their attack just before the sun was up. The Ming would launch seven assaults that day. Kato Kiyomasa wore a green jinbaiori carrying a banner leading the matchlock men from the front. It's even said that he participated in the shooting to keep the Ming off the walls. The supplies put the Japanese in a very good spot. On the other side of the field, the Ming, though, were already starting to suffer. See, they had been forced to camp out in the surrounding woods. And on top of that, they were forced to sustain themselves on field rations. Every time the Ming and Joseon approached the walls, they were met with heavy casualties. Joseon official Lu Songyong would actually write about this in his book, saying, The guards of the enemy stayed inside that corridor and from there discharged their matchlocks. Whenever their opponents approached, pouring down bullets. Every day this kind of battle was repeated, and the bodies of Chinese soldiers and our own began to pile up under the walls of those fortress. Several of the Ming captains, including Zhou San, and even righteous army commander leaders had died in these assaults. Around 7 p.m., Yang Hao came to the realization that these assaults were a failure and called them off. While the attack on the fortress had been going on, another Japanese flotilla showed up. On board the ships, Japanese matchlock men opened up on the Ming on the beach. Li Rumei then had his cannons fire on some of the Japanese ships and managed to even sink a few. Then Yang Hao ordered the commanders Gao Sei and Zhu Chengzun to reinforce the men on the beach. Seeing as the ships didn't have a way around the Ming cannons, the Japanese flotilla withdrew. Later, after the attacks had been called off, Yang Hao sent a messenger to Kato Kiyomasa 
to negotiate a potential surrender. Kato sent a message back saying that he would only be open to it if the Koreans also agreed to the terms to be made. Yang Hao withdrew the offer then. And this is where I will leave you. Tune in next time as the battle continues. I'll see you next time.